everyone, my name is Jessica Morthorpe and I'm here on the land of the Burramadigal people of the Darug Nation in Parramatta. Some of you might know me as the director of the Five Leaf Eco Awards or in my previous role as a Uniting Earth Advocate. I'm really passionate about caring for our environment because it is God's. God loved creation into being, holds and sustains it in being and calls on us as the church to work with God towards the reconciliation and renewal of all creation and the redemption of all creatures. So I've tried over many years to be part of God's work in this by connecting with churches doing amazing things for the environment. Today, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite things to do with churches, which is to make beeswax wraps. Along with other zero waste alternatives you are probably familiar with, like reusable bags, keep cups, reusable straws, bamboo toothbrushes, glass water bottles, travel cutlery pouches, and cloth pads, beeswax wraps help us to reduce the amount of single-use plastic in our lives. This is particularly important for our marine wildlife like turtles, who can eat plastic bags thinking they're jellyfish, and get plastic straws stuck up their noses. So beeswax wraps are a simple little tool that we can make to take care of God's creation. Essentially, they are an alternative to cling wrap or glad wrap. So you can use them to cover leftovers, wrap up half a tomato or an apple, or to store a block of hard cheese. To use, yep. you simply place the wrapper over the bowl or cup and use the warmth of your hands to melt the beeswax slightly so that you can get a nice seal. There are just three things you need to be careful about with these wraps. Firstly, because they're made of beeswax, they're very vulnerable to heat. Never wash your beeswax wrap in hot water or you'll need to re-coat them with wax. Just cold water and soap is fine to clean them. Also, because we aren't using hot water to wash them, it's best not to use these wraps with meat or soft cheeses because these contain a lot of germs and you want to avoid cross-contamination. Another caution is that beeswax is very sticky and it can be hard to get off things. So I recommend protecting your surfaces with baking paper and being careful not to splash the wax around or drop it on the floor. In fact, while you can make these wraps at home on your own, this is where I usually encourage people to make them together in a group because then you only have one kitchen that you need to clean afterwards and most of the ingredients come in bulk so it's easier to buy and share than for everyone to have to buy their own. So this really is a great church and community activity and a great outreach event when we're allowed to gather again. So to make our wraps, firstly we create a double boiler. So we take some old pasta jars and put them in a pot with a small amount of water and bring it to the boil. Don't use your favorite pot because it will get dirty. The first thing we put in the jar is our gum resin. Mine is just from a furniture store online, but make sure that you get food grade. The resin is going to give our wraps their stickiness and it has the highest boiling temperature, so we put it in first. I don't like my wraps very sticky though, so I just use one tablespoon. If you want your wraps more sticky, you can add more. Once the resin is looking melted, we can add our beeswax. I buy my beeswax pre-grated, which makes it melt faster and more evenly. But if you have a wedge or slab of beeswax, that's fine. You just might need to grate it if it's too big, which can be a bit painful and ruin your grater. So I'm gonna add about two cups of wax, but I'm gonna do it in batches so that the wax can melt. Once your wax is melted, we can add our final ingredient, the coconut oil.
Some people like to use jojoba or other oils, but I like coconut because it's cheap and easy to get. You can buy this from your local supermarket. The oil's role is to make your wrap more supple and prevent it cracking like a pure beeswax wrap might. So I'm just going to add one tablespoon and that will melt almost immediately. So now I'll just give it a stir so that our three ingredients combine as well as possible. So now we have our wrap coating. We take a piece of material, ideally 100% cotton, so that it can be composted at the end of the life of our wrap. The material can be any size or shape, as long as it can lie flat in the tray that you're using. On a protected surface, we paint the material with the hot wax coating. You want to cover every part of the material, but you want a reasonably thin, even coating not too much excess. Make sure that you get the edges and the corners especially. I recommend covering your tray with a good cover of aluminium foil and baking paper to protect the tray from the melted wax. Once the wrap is painted on one side, it only needs to be one, we put it on the tray and in the oven at 150 degrees or less. This step will even out your painting and give us a nice smooth covering. After 90 seconds, we pull the wrap out, hold it up and wave it a bit until it stops dripping. If it drips a lot, that means that you painted too much wax on, so try and do a thinner coat next time. We check that there are no dry patches anywhere on the wrap, especially in the corner and edges. If it's all well covered, you can hang it up on a clothes horse to dry. But if there are patches, then paint them and put the wrap back in the oven for another 90 seconds. And that's it. In 24 hours, your wrap will have had the chance to settle a bit and will be ready for you to use. Hopefully, you'll never need to buy a cling wrap again. And you might even like to magnify your impact by making a little gift bundle of wraps for your friends and family.